Hello everyone and welcome back to the Getting Started with Power Apps Component Framework tutorial series. In the previous tutorial, we understood the manifest file, that is the file that provides metadata to the component. We looked at the various things such as how you can configure properties as well as how you can use resources within your code component. In this tutorial, we will go ahead and focus on the actual implementation of the code component. So without wasting any further time, let's get into the tutorial. So let me open up my Visual Studio code and let me first stop the rendering of the component, right? The real magic happens in the index.txt file because this is where we are going to implement the code component. The index.txt file is a TypeScript file or the code is implemented in TypeScript. The component includes an object that implements the method that is used to describe the code component. If you look at the code component from top to down, you will go ahead and see the various objects and the methods that implement the code component. So first and foremost, let's start with the methods. So the first method would be the init method. The init method is said to be used for initializing the component. The init method have got parameters passed to it, mainly the context, the notify output change, the state and the container. The container is the due element. So what is the context? The context is particularly required for the init component. So it is required. You cannot get rid of it, right? And this context will help you get the input properties from your parameters. So when I talk about the parameters, the parameters, where are they? Go, where do we go ahead and declare them? We declare them in the control manifest.input file, right? So if you want to get these parameters or these properties out here, we need to go ahead and use the context. The next would be the notify output change. Yes, you can get rid of it because if you don't want to notify that an output has been changed, then you can just get rid of this parameter. However, the notify output change is a callback method that alerts the framework that the component has got new outputs ready to be retrieved in asynchronously. Okay, so it notifies your component or the method. Next would be the state. Next, the state is said to be the state of the control, that is the piece of data that persists in one session for a single user. That's what the state does. The HTML container or the due is the one element that we are going to append various controls or HTML elements to it, right? So that makes the init component. Basically, you initialize your component here. The next component or the next method would be the update method. The update method also has the context. The context is used to get the property back or the parameters defined in the control.manifest. So the init method is called when the container or when the control is initialized. The update method is called whenever the property bag is changed. So what is a property bag? Let me quickly actually launch the browser. So these are the properties and these are the property bags. Whenever something changes here, for example, blue, this is where the update method will fire, right? So update method is the property bag is called whenever a property in the property bag has been updated. Next is the output. The outputs will contain the values which for which the usage is said to be bound, right? 
So if you have the property which needs to be passed in to another component or which actually outputs something after processing, this is where you go ahead and return the value. Next comes the destroy method. The destroy method is a cleanup method. It is used to clean up the code. So firstly, what do we want to create? Let's go back and look at this. We need a container or we need some text out here, right? So let me go ahead and actually create an element or a div element that can go ahead and have our text in it. So let me go to the initialization method and I want to create an element. So to create an element, before I create it here, let me define it. Let me go ahead and declare it on the top. So on the top as in in the class. So I will say private glowing text and we'll define it as a type. The type would be HTML element. So this is TypeScript. We'll define a type HTML element. So let's use the property defined out here. So I'll say this dot glowing text and I want to say which type of element it is. So I'll use the document dot create element and I will define it as a div element. Perfect, right? So a div element. Next, what I want to do, I want to set the inner HTML of this text. So I will say glowing text, this dot glowing text dot inner HTML. And let's hard code it for now. And let's see how our component looks like. So I'll say Clavin Fernandez. Okay, that's pretty much it. We have initialized the component. Let's run, let's build it. And let's actually go ahead and watch it. However, the build is not compulsory. You can just do start watch. By the way, you can also update the component in real time and the control will be rendered, okay? So let me get rid of other things out here and let me refresh this component. Okay, there's nothing on the component, why? We added the component, but we did not append, sorry, we added the HTML element, but we did not go ahead and append it to the container. So we need to append this to the container. Container dot append. Let's say let's append it as a child element. And this element I'm going to append, right? And if you see, if I click on save, I can go back and it has been updated to Clavin Fernandez. Perfect, right? So we have a placeholder which can contain our text. And that's awesome. But we want to pass this text dynamically from data inputs. How can we do that? So to do that, we go back to our control. And here, my friends, I'll go back to control manifest. And let's give this some meaningful name. It's sample property, right? Let's say that this property name is actually glow text, right? And I'll just copy this and let's change these as well. Single line of text is perfect. Bound is perfect. I'll just add a T and a T here. And I'll save this, right? If I go back here, you see the property has been updated to glow text. Now let me launch my code editor again. And I want to access these properties from the property back in the init method. And how will we do that? To go ahead and get the properties or the properties within the property bag, we can use the context, right? So let's go ahead and try to use the context out here. So I'll say context dot. What do I want? I want the parameter and I want glow text say dot raw right now it's complaining that the string null is not assignable to a string perfect so i might have to define a condition out here so i'll say if 
And let me copy this thing. Let me just copy this line of code. Let me paste it here. And now I can say if this exists, go ahead and set the value. So let me just try this. Yes, the error is gone. So let me go ahead and start this. Perfect, right? Now it's showing Val. So if I go and type in Clavin, it's not updating. But let's, when I refresh, it goes ahead and updates. Understand this, if I change it here, it's not updating, but as soon as I refresh, it updates. And this is not the behavior that we need. So the behavior that we need is whenever the container has been or the property back changes, that is where we want to go ahead and update that text. So when is the update method rendered, right? Update method is rendered whenever a property in the property bag has changed. So I need to paste the same code out here as well. Now, let me go back and let me try again. Now I'll say Claven PCF, you see, it's updating. So here my friends, we have understood how we initialize a container and how we can go ahead and add other properties, right? Now let me go ahead and pass in few other properties out here. I'll actually go ahead and copy paste the code rather than you seeing me type those things. So first, I go to the control manifest file and let me define few properties out here. Perfect. So these are the properties that is text size, color, text align, text weight. If you look at the manifest.ts, it's automatically been done. So we don't have to worry about it. If we go to the index file, we can just copy these things and pass this over. Right, so it will be exactly the code similar to the glow text code. Perfect, so this is looking good. Similarly, I'll paste the same in the update view property. Now, if I go back here to the browser, I see a number of properties. I can change the text size, so I can say 50. So here I can change few properties in the property bag and this will work. So I, if I change the text color as red, it changes out here. Now you might have a question why the text size does not change. So I need to look at it. Let me quickly look at my code. And let me actually add, because it's in pixels, right? So plus px, plus px. Let me save it. And here, my friends, you see, the text size has also been changed. So we have configured our property bag. We have also configured our control. Now we need to add the glowing effect and we will do that in the next tutorial by adding CSS to our control. So thank you for your time and see you in the next tutorial. Bye-bye for now.